As a Chamber member, you have direct access to promoting your business on the Chamber website. Here's how to update your online directory listing to be sure the most accurate information is showing up to potential members. Your directory shows up not only on the Chamber website, but also on Google. This is extremely important for those of you new to business or with little to no online presence. Additionally, your directory listing is going to add credibility to your business. The Chamber regularly gets calls from people asking if a business is legitimate before they hire them. The Chamber directory is also what our staff and volunteers use to help refer business to you. Some people may be looking for a specific aspect of your business that we may not know about, so I highly recommend filling out all of the keywords, categories, and any other information available to you. I also recommend updating your listing annually just to be sure nothing has changed. To get started, log into the Member Information Center using the login link provided to you by the Chamber. If you have not yet created your password, you need to do so using the link provided. If you have any trouble with that, please contact your chamber so they can send you a new link to do so. Once we're logged in, your screen should be very different. It'll look similar to this. And in the top right hand corner, you're going to find the account settings drop down menu. You're going to click on it to expand the other options. And we're going to click on company information. This is where the vast majority of the information that shows up about your business can be edited for the Chamber website. So for this, so for this first page, just quickly glance through and make sure everything's right. If you had to make any changes, just hit Save Changes, and that is now live on the Chamber website and database. Then on the left-hand side menu, because again, we're working off of our company information, so this left sidebar is different than when we first logged in, we're just gonna keep going down the line. Employees, we can add to this. However, you might wanna contact the chamber first because it will not necessarily give them the same access that you have. If you need them to have a separate login or to receive chamber emails, then we're gonna go to website information. Now this is definitely what we're gonna focus most of our time on. So with this checkbox, it's just using organization information, which is everything that was on that first page. Now for this set of information, everything on here will be public and on the Chamber website. So even though the Chamber had our mailing address, it's not necessarily listed on the website. So make sure all of this is okay for the public to have. Then for social network services, if you want it to show up on the listing, you will need to check the box, otherwise it won't show. So right now, none of these are listed regardless of the, the URL in there. So we're gonna check the box and then just copy and paste our page. If you don't know how to do that, you will go find your page. So, so this is my Facebook page. So I'm going to select all of this URL, this text, and I'm going to copy it. I'll go back to here and I will check the Facebook box. I will replace the text by pasting it in here. And so this is how I get my Facebook page to show up. Next is the web description. This is going to be like the about section that describes your business, but keep in mind a real person is reading this and that person is a potential customer. So you wanna word it fairly decently. You want to sound somewhat welcoming, but you're also just going to explain what your business is, who you are. If you have a unique selling proposition, you're going to include that, anything that sets you apart from your competition. But again, we wanna keep it readable because a real person is reading this. For search results description, again, a real person will read this, except it's much shorter. You're going to make it probably two sentences or less. It tells you right here that it has a character maximum and that's fine. This is also what will show up on Google. If your listing is one of the Google results, which is very true for many businesses, especially if you have no to little online presence. So for this, it's going to be about your business, but less than two sentences long. And your goal is for them to want to click on that search result listing just to learn more about your business. So we're not trying to sell them everything. We just want them to click through to learn about you. Hours of operation should be pretty self-explanatory. Driving directions, same thing. Again, real person's reading that. If there's any visual cues that you might know of, put that in here. Next is highlights. 
website visitors will be able to click through past your web description and also see just a list of these five bullet points. It's a maximum of five. In the first column, we're gonna put the text of what we want. So it might be services offered and then in the URL box, we're actually gonna put the URL for your website. With this, one of the reasons I really like this feature is that we can link to multiple pages of your website. So if you're a restaurant, you could have one for your menu, one for your location, anything else you might have. If you have very different kinds of services, you could actually bullet out like here's the one main service, here's the second kind, and actually have that separate link for each of those. So if you can, I would actually really try to make the most of these five bullet text URLs. And then like your directory listing on your website, this is actually good SEO because you're building your own backlinks and you're getting exactly what you want out of them. Last for this page is keywords. Now in here, this is not a real person reading this, so we're just gonna stuff in a bunch of relevant words about our business. So you're probably gonna put in your business name, but you're also going to put in any acronyms or slang or other ways people say your name as well as common misspellings of your name. That way, even if the person searching for you is wrong, you're still showing up for them. You can also list in even more of your services or things people are looking for outside of these five things. So if there's a service that you offer, but you call it a certain name, but other people looking for it might happen to be searching similar words, but they're a little bit differently. This is a great place to put those as well as your competitor's name. So for example, even if you're a local coffee shop, you're gonna put in Starbucks so that when other people are sh searching for them, you are still showing up and coming up as an option for them. So I highly, highly recommend taking advantage of this keyword box as much as you can. This is such a great feature that really almost nobody really takes the full advantage of. So this, this really, I think would make a difference for your online presence. And then once that's done, you're just gonna hit save. And these changes are now live on the Chamber website. So next on the left-hand sidebar, we're gonna look at logos. However, I do wanna put out there that not everybody will have access to this. Your chamber might do these manually for you, or these might be part of an enhanced directory option, which I'm actually a pretty big fan of because this can still set you apart from other chamber members. So if this isn't enabled for you, just click add image, it'll let you browse your computer and you can upload your logos into the right places. Then yet again, at the bottom, we'll hit save changes. And then I'll go ahead and quickly move on to the next one, which is photos. Very similarly, this might be part of a paid upgrade option. If you do have it enabled, you're gonna hit create gallery and it just changes it to look like this. And to add the photos, we're actually gonna click on manage gallery. And then now we have some buttons you're probably familiar with. Add image will let you browse your computer for different images. Once you choose the file that you want, you'll just hit finish and then you'll click add image to choose any other relevant photos that you want in there. Now with this section, keep in mind, you've probably already put your logo in a few places. So this is a really great place to personalize your business. And what I mean by that is yes, pictures of your work, your services, any really good examples or customer photos that you might have are all great. Additionally, you can put photos of your staff as well as your building or location so that your, your business really starts to look familiar to them. This is just like a neat little psychological trick that I thought was really cool because if I see this photo and I do end up doing business with you and then I go to drive to your store, as I'm trying to look where to turn, when I see your building, it looks familiar. So I go, oh, there it is though. I just thought that was cool. And then, if you decide to move around the order, you can actually just click and drag your photos into whatever order you want. And then you would just hit save gallery. And now that is also live on the Chamber website. Next is video. This is a little bit different in that you cannot upload a video. It has to be a YouTube video URL. Personally, I think that's fine because I just personally really like YouTube to host all of my videos, but the one that you're going to pick is probably your most basic intro to the business for potential customers. So if you have one like that, that is definitely the one you would want to use. 
Next is map pin information. And what I usually do is just the Google Maps and I'm gonna go through that. However, there is an option to upload an image if you, for some reason, if your GPS is just always wrong for whatever reason, if you can't get it fixed, this is where you can upload the image and just be like, here, this is where we are. And obviously, if you're a home-based business or you don't have a physical location, you can hit none. But we're gonna do Google Maps. If you have a physical location, then yeah, we're probably gonna leave that box checked. And then it should actually kind of auto pull in whatever your physical address is from one of the previous tabs that we typed in. I just don't have one listed because I am a home-based business. So I'm actually going to do custom, but yours really should be kind of in there. And then to finish this section off, um, again, something very simple, a lot of people skip is our point of interest category. Just pick the closest thing that you think makes the most sense. If you don't see it, I do recommend looking through what could be considered some of the odd ones like going out, but really just go through them and try to pick the most relevant one for your business and make sure you're filling out both of these options. And then when you're done, just hit save changes. So hopefully you followed along and if you need to, you can rewatch this video and hit pause as you're going through the different sections. I really, really recommend you fill out everything, fill out all the options as much as you can with as much information as you can. This will help you both on and offline more than you realize. And then after that, just again, this is back from the, the welcome screen. You can also actually from this portal add any hot deals, member deals, news releases, job openings. You can do a lot more with the, the Chamber website, so I do recommend you looking into those as well.